In this class you're going to learn how to solve trigonometric equations without the use of a calculator. So all trigonometry falls into two broad categories. You've got the stuff you can do without a calculator and the stuff you absolutely need a calculator for. And the stuff over here, it's not that you can't count well enough to do it without a calculator. You just physically need a calculator to do those problems. I need a calculator for those problems. So if you were using a calculator, the operation you would be using is the inverse. So you'd be using things like sine inverse, cos inverse, tan inverse. You're probably familiar with those already. And you would basically punch this into the calculator. So sine inverse of some number, like a half, and it returns a value. And it's that value that we're looking for, like in this case, 30 degrees. The question we're gonna ask though is how do we get those values without the use of a calculator? How can I work out that 30 degrees from this information without the calculator. To do that, we're going to use something called trig exact values. Now, exact values come from what's called the unit circle definition of the trig functions. Your teacher probably showed you this at some point, you'd have been falling asleep. It's pretty boring stuff to be honest, but it does give us this very useful information, these exact values. Basically, the exact values mean that you're going to want to know the sine, cos and tan values for these values, so 0, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, uh, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And the same in radians, okay? So remember as well, all trigonometry can be in degrees or radians, so the same is true for the radian equivalent of these, so pi by 6, pi by uh, 4, uh, pi by uh, 3, and then pi by 2. So the same values for degrees or radians. How do we memorize and learn these values? Well, we get these two trig triangles, I like to call them. So you've just got to memorize these triangles. So the first one, I'm going to present these in degrees, but they could be in radians as well. So the first one has got, it's a right angle triangle, it's got 45 degrees here, 45 degrees in the other corner as well, and the side lengths are 1, 1, and then by Pythagoras root 2. So you just have to commit that to memory, okay? So 45 degrees in the corners, or pi by 4 if you're working in radians, and just remember the side lengths. So you're going to have to spend a little time working on that to remember that. The other triangle is a little more elongated. And try and draw them differently because they do look very different. This one should be kind of symmetrical. This one looks a little different. The side lengths here are 1, 2 and root 3. So 2 is the biggest number there, so it goes on the long side. 1 is the smallest number. And then root 3 is the side down here. And the angles this time are 30 degrees or pi by 6 if you're working in radians. 60 degrees, again it's a right angle triangle, or pi by 3 if you're working in radians. So notice that the triangles look quite different. A lot of students will draw this one to make it look like this one, but these angles are nothing like each other. In fact, 60 degrees is double 30 degrees, so this angle should be much more open than this angle, meaning the opposite side length should be a lot shorter than this side length here. I've maybe even exaggerated it a little here just to emphasize that point. So that's where the exact values come from because we can now do Sokotoa on these. So for example, if I wanted to work out, say, the cosine of 45 degrees, well, cosine from Sokotoa, which hopefully you're familiar with and quite proficient in, cosine is opposite, um, adjacent, sorry, over hypotenuse. So if we choose this angle, adjacent is 1, hypotenuse is root 2. So the exact value of the cosine of 45 is 1 over root 2. Similarly, pulling down here, if we wanted to say, figure out the cosine, sorry, the sine of 30 degrees, so we got 30 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse is 1 over 2. That's the method we're going to be using to solve these three trig equations that we're going to look at as examples in a moment. So this is a theory, if you like, let's move on and take that theory and look at these examples. Let's then work some of these in degrees and some in radians. We'll start by working this one for theta. So we're using theta as our variable between 0 and 360 degrees, which will be your standard range of values for a lot of trig equations. So the first thing you do here is rearrange the algebra. So we're going to get 2 sine theta equals root 3. Dividing the 2 to the other side, we get sine theta equals root 3 over 2. Now we're kind of doing what I did down here backwards. We're trying to figure out the angle that would give us root 3 over 2. Now this, if it was a calculator question, would follow this method and we would just use sine inverse root 3 over 2 and we would get the answer. We've got to figure out how to do that manually without a calculator. So 
Remember, sine is uh, opposite over hypotenuse. So we want the angle such that root 3 is opposite, root 3, and 2 is the hypotenuse. Well, 2 is always the hypotenuse from this triangle. The focus should be the root 3 being the opposite. Well, root 3 is opposite 60 degrees. That tells us that the answer we're looking for is 60 degrees. So theta equals 60 degrees. Now, trig equations generally have multiple solutions, and this one should have two solutions in this range. How do we get the other solution? You need to be familiar with the cast diagram. So that's another skill. If you're not familiar with that, then maybe look it up. You can either use the cast diagram or the graph of the sine function, or whatever function is in the question. Using the cast diagram, we would be checking the two positive, because this is a positive number sine quadrants. That's here and here. Remember, this goes zero. 90 degrees if you're working in degrees and then 180, 270 and back to 360 so you're doing like a circle and we want to check here and here we've already got the solution here that's the 60 degrees the second solution in the second quadrant the s quadrant we're going to get by doing 180 minus the first solution so theta becomes 180 minus 60 which gives us a second solution of 120 degrees. So using the cast diagram is a skill within itself. Hopefully you're already familiar with that. If not, check it out somewhere else. Okay, let's work this one. So that is our two solutions, by the way, for this problem, 60 degrees and 120 degrees. That means if you put 60 degrees in here or 120, so sine of 60, sine of 120, you would get root three over two if you, you know, put that in the calculator, for example. This one's similar, a little more challenging. So we're going to start by rearranging the algebra again. So we're going to get root 2 cosine theta equals minus 1. It's just the fact that it's a minus that makes the working a little more um, challenging. So we get cosine theta equals minus 1 over root 2. If it's a negative, I would recommend at this stage maybe doing your cast diagram. If it's a negative on the cast diagram, you're going to have to check the quadrants where the function is not positive, so the opposite of positive. So if this was cosine positive, it would be here and here we would check. It's cosine negative, so we have to check in the second and the third quadrant. So 90 degrees, 180, 270. So we're looking for solutions between 90 and 180 and 180 and 270. When it's a negative, obviously we cannot have a negative side length on these triangles, so we ignore the negative. We imagine, kind of as a piece of like side working, so you might want to put this at the side or in a bracket or something, we imagine that it actually says cosine theta equals 1 over root 2, and then we figure out the solution for that. Well, 1 over root 2 we're going to generate from this triangle. The only angle in this triangle we can use is 45, so that tells us the solution in that scenario would be 45 degrees. Okay? That's not our scenario. 45 degrees is in the first quadrant where we don't have a check, but this 45 is a number we're going to use to adjust from 180 to get our solution. So you do need this calculation where you drop the negative. It's just not going to give you one of your actual solutions. So we can now, though, say that the theta values are going to be this one here, which is 180 minus 45 which gives us a final answer of 135 degrees. Remember to write it in degrees. I mean, to use the degrees symbol. And the second one in the T quadrant is 180 plus 45. It's plus 45 and minus 45 because the cast diagram goes counterclockwise. So this is the positive direction. So if you're going backwards, it's going to be negative if you're going back that way. So the second solution to get in the T quadrant will be 180 plus 45, which is a solution of 225 degrees. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. A little bit more work and you can see in that one, a little bit more thought because of the negative value. Okay, let's take a look at this third example, which is a little more involved. It's got what's called a double angle. To solve these, you need knowledge of the double angle formulas. I'm just chucking this in here as the, if you're only at this stage, that's totally cool. And then this would be like the next level. So just to show you what you might see in a trig equation, we're also going to work this one in radians instead of degrees, doesn't really make a huge amount of difference in terms of the working. It doesn't make any difference, really. Um, it's just that we generally find radians more difficult. There's more, maybe, computation in our head. So 0 to 2 pi, that's the same as 0 to 360, but presented in radians. So we'll need to present 
our solutions in radians and really ideally do all the work in radians. Try not to work it in degrees and then just convert to radians at the end. That can cause a few problems. The first thing we've got to overcome here is we've got a mix of a single angle and a double angle. That means that at this stage that, pro that equation is unsolvable. We need to turn either the single into the double or the double into the single. The way we do it is to turn a double angle into the single. There are three double angle formulas. You need to either know them or check them on a formula list. The one that we're going to use tells us that cosine 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So we're just going to take this and plug it into our equation. So our equation we can now update to become sine theta minus 2 times, I'm just going to use a bracket here because we're pulling in cos 2 theta which is all of that guy there. So just using a bracket really because of the 2 and because of the negative just to make sure we don't miss double negatives. So 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and that is equal to 1. So this is our new equation. Notice that it's all in terms of sine. That's what we were looking for. That's why I chose that double angle formula. There's another double angle formula with only cosine and there's another one that's got a mix of sine and cosine. So let's just do a little algebra to tidy this up. So we get sine theta multiplying out the bracket we get minus 2. We get a plus 4 sine squared theta equals 1. I'm going to form this into a trinomial. So basically making a quadratic equation. So 4 sine squared theta plus, so that's this term here, plus the sine theta. Pull in the 1 over to make a minus 1, so minus 2 minus 1 will be minus 3 equals 0. So if you look at this here, it's a trinomial, but not a trinomial in x or theta, it's a trinomial in sine theta. So that can be a little confusing. It's a trinomial, it's a quadratic equation though, still, so we still have to factorise it into two brackets like this. These are not easy to get your head around um, because the factorising is quite difficult. The n numbers are prime number, so we know the factors have to be 3 and 1. Then we've got to figure out do we want 4 sine theta and the sine theta, or do we want 2 and 2? You've just got to do that a little bit by sort of trial and error. Uh, this one works out to be a 4 sine theta here, although that is not easy, the factorising is quite difficult in this type of problem and sine theta. So let's just check what we've got there. So um, 4 sine theta times sine theta gives us 4 sine squared theta, so we've got that term. The 1 and the 3 can multiply to make the minus 3, we've just got to get the signs correct. If it is going to be a minus 3, we need either plus minus or minus plus, but we all need to add, we need to add all of it together to make a plus 1 sine in the middle, we would achieve that by having a plus here and a minus here because 1 sine, 1 times 4 sine theta is 4 sine theta. We're subtracting from that 3 sine theta because that middle term is made by a combination of these guys and these guys. So it's basically 4 sine theta minus 3 sine theta to give us that term in the middle. So that is the correct factorising. That's properly difficult, so you've got to really um, spend a little bit of time thinking about that. Now, just to highlight a couple of things in this problem. So if we, to take this forward, we now need to separate these into two equations. Now the first one, 4 sine theta minus 3 equals 0, and sine theta plus 1 equals 0. A couple of things to bear in mind here. Now, if we want to solve this without a calculator, which is what we're trying to do in this class, Notice that the numbers we've generated, or in fact we could take it a step further and make it sine theta equals 3 over 4 by rearranging. But the important point I want to emphasise is that notice that the numbers here are not numbers that appear in the triangles, which are only 1, 2, root 3 and root 2. So if you get to a point in a question where you don't have those numbers, you cannot solve it non-calculator. That means that to take this forward, which we're not going to do, but just to highlight the point, you've got no choice but to use the inverse. This has to now be sine inverse 3 over 4 on the calculator and then taking that problem forward using that calculator method but still using cast diagram, still using the overall method but getting the number from the calculator. So if you're presented with a question and you don't get the numbers in these triangles you cannot do it non-calculator and that's true vice versa as well. Okay, so that's just something to know. Uh, secondly, this one here, if we split it, um, if we separate, we split it off, and now we're going to make it sine theta equals minus one. So minus one 
1 and 0 are not numbers that appear in these um, triangles as a ratio. Like you cannot create, um, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, you cannot create a minus 1 by using these triangles. So we need another method for these, what I call extreme values. So if you're dealing with a sine, cos, or tan of, um, well, particularly for sine and cos, if you're dealing with sine and cos of the values minus one, zero, and one, these are the, the minimum, the middle, and the highest values for those functions, you need to think of another method rather than the triangles. This is really common. Quite often when you split these off, you'll solve one of them by using the triangles like we've done here, and you'll solve one of them by thinking of another method, which is basically the graph of the function. So drawing a quick sketch for the sine graph, the sine graph goes like this. This one we're working in uh, radians, remember. We're looking for where the sine graph gets to minus one. That's this point here. That point corresponds to a minus one value. That's the point which, if we were in degrees, would be 270 degrees. We're working in radians, so 270 degrees in radians is, well, think of, the, the way to think about that is that pi by 2, uh, 90 degrees, is um, 270 is 3 times pi by 2. It's 3 times 90 degrees. So if 90 degrees equals pi by 2, then that implies that 270 degrees which is three times 90 degrees is gonna be three pi by two. So that means that our answer is 270 degrees, but because we're working it in radians, it's three pi by two, and that is our theta value. And that's the only solution that satisfies that equation. This form of equation where you've got a double angle can have much more um, than one solution. It could have up to sort of five solutions sometimes, but only one in this case. So, yeah, that's basically how we go about solving that problem. So it's just a little quick tour of some of the theory for solving trig equations using exact values, which basically means using these triangles and not using the calculator. And a couple of kind of more basic examples there, and then a slightly more involved example, highlighting the fact that if you do get to a point where you don't have those numbers, you cannot proceed without the calculator. So it's something that you should uh, look out for. Trigonometry is not easy, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of variables, there's a lot of skill in these questions, it takes a fair bit of experience, so don't expect to just get it straight away. But hopefully this uh, makes sense, hopefully this helps, and if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments below.